Good morning, folks. We're taking a day off from spanking climate scientists to deliver one to the observers. We've got Tier 1 news articles, but first we're going to go over some space weather. We're starting at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star, small coronal surge, top left quadrant. But otherwise, nothing much in the Earth-facing position. Yesterday, February 17th, I was astounded at how many people were asking about the CME from the day before. What about the X-Class flare on the far side? What about that enormous CME? If that had come our way, it's all over. Uh, no. To all of that. I'll begin by reminding you that the day before, on the 16th, I actually showed you the eruption, leaving behind the limb on AIA 304. I showed it to you before someone else scared you about it. And while yes, the CME is not small, it's nothing terrifying, and it's not anything we don't see in sunspot maximum. X-flare? No. It was a filament eruption, and if it had been a flare, there's no way to gauge its flare rating as M or X or whatever. It's behind the limb. Now before I show you several examples of the same size or bigger CMEs, let me ask, did any of you who were freaking out over the CME watch this video from January 18th, one month ago? If so, and you still got scared yesterday, maybe you need to watch it again. Anyone who told you this was a huge or an X-class event or that it would have ended our world does not know space weather. Now, here's just a handful, maybe 5% of those bigger CMEs from just the last 20 years. Some of these actually hit the Earth. And as you can see, many are equally large, fast, and contain the central plasma density component. If anything, what happened on the back of the sun two days ago is indicative of what we've been saying. The sun is reaching sunspot maximum. And end of February, early March should be the 5.9 month cycle uptick. And here we are. Now, let's do some real science news, shall we? This one is amazing, not only because it obliterates the previous record of brown dwarf binary distance, but because it tells them that they can indeed have much wider orbits than they imagined. And this brings us back 72,000 years ago to when Shoal Star Red Binary came through the system. It was likely wider than they think, may have left Jupiter in here, and was likely the cause of all the Nibiru stories. That paper on the brown dwarf binary distance means that event 72,000 years ago was likely far worse than their modern graphics tell us. And last but not least, Heinrich events, Dansgaard Oeschger events, and Bond events. Oh my. It's amazing to watch this team so clearly identify the major cycles, use orbital forcing for the long-term ones, and we are forced to recall the solar Heinrich bond cycle driven by super flare activity. They may still have silly names for those cycles, but they are the major solar force cycles, the big cycles on Earth. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more about those cycles in our disaster film from Christmas Day. The Earth Disaster Documentary is linked in the morning news in that description box below each video. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.